Kew Gardens in London is home to some rare and endangered plant species and it's the perfect spot to take shelter from the unseasonal rain. On our recent Saturday afternoon, my wife and I visited and on seeing the sheer excitement in my face, she grabbed the camera and started recording. So here's some of the video that we've put together that I'd like to share with you. So today we're at Kew Gardens and we're currently inside of the Tempera house, which I absolutely love because there are so many plants here that tolerate slightly cold temperatures and I'm recognizing so much that we grow at home, like Lobelia bambusetii, I think it is. Possibly, and if it is, probably one of the seeds has come from Mike Clifford. And I know that they've got lots of this plant here. The Temperate House at Kew Gardens is the world's largest Victorian glass house. And it actually recently underwent a renovation that took five years and it reopened in 2018. And this glass house is now home to 10,000 individual plant species from temperate regions around the world, including Africa, Australia, New Zealand, the Americas, Asia, and the Pacific Islands. Now temperate means plants that need a minimum temperature of 10 degrees Celsius to survive, but you will recognize some of these plants from the Grow Paradise Garden. Now in my garden, they are not doing anywhere near as well as they are with the protection of glass. So it shows what environment they need to thrive. So you can get the height of this. It's a Enseti ventricosum Aurelii, the Ethiopian banana, and we all grow these, and we buy them as tiny little plug plants in the spring. If you're patient and you've got enough space, this is the giant that they will grow into. Last time I was here, they had one in flower, and I've never seen an Enseti flower before, but I've got a picture and I'll show it to you. Half hardy in the garden at home. With the touch sensitive flowers. Leucodendron, I actually looked after two of these at Really nice plant. But I killed my own at home. I see it's not just me that's murdering these plants. I feel better now. One of the best things about taking a day out of your own patch of paradise is finding new plants and inspiration, as well as seeing new ways to grow the plants that you already cultivate. Oh, and it's also an opportunity just to chill out, wind down and mess around a little bit. A new plant to me was this tree, Kygelia africana, known as the sausage tree. It had such bizarre flowers and it took me a while to realize why it was called the sausage tree. I can see why it's called the sausage tree. Very decrepit, moldy looking sausages hanging after the flowers. I wonder if I can grow this at home. It's another nice plant, one I don't recognize. I really like the yellow panicles of flowers, but the bumpy texture on the leaves is really nice as well. The label says Acridocarpus matialiatus. I love Latin, it turns my tongue up in nuts. That wasn't the only time my wife laughed at me. Trying to wrap my tongue around the Latin names of some of these plants is so difficult. Let's see, look, Impatiens. Tatiensis. It's nice, really nice. It's a bit like um, Impatiens tinctoria, the South African one we've got. Oh wait, this is the African part of the glass house. It's the afternoon. I'm still waking up. It's nice. Titiensis. Tati titi. Yes, Latin. I told you. At least there were some plants here that I recognised like this Cyphermandra beticum or the Tamarillo, which we've been growing and selling as plants and seeds for a couple of years. I was pleased to see carnivorous plants included in a small display. I'm actually really intrigued to add some carnivorous plants to the Grow Paradise Garden and there are native species and hardy Saracena, that's the pitcher plants that I can add to the garden. And I've grown some when we had the stream in the early days. Some of you 
who have been subscribers for a long time might remember that. Come and see it from this side. I love the name. It looks like Candelabra reminds me of the character on Beauty and the Beast. Be my guest. Be my I have no idea why she stops recording when I started singing. The Temperate House is by far one of my favourite places in Kew and probably one of my favourite places in the UK to visit just for seeing giants like these black Cyathea tree ferns. It's phenomenal. Imagine if you had the space to grow something like this in your own garden. So much excitement, it's now time for a quick pit stop and then we're going to walk across Kew Gardens into the Princess of Wales Conservatory and this is my first time in there. So I've just walked into one of the tropical glass houses at Kew and the atmosphere is amazing and as you can imagine I'm in heaven so let's have a look what's in it. bonkers, one of the biggest allocators I have ever seen and I complain that mine get too big to overwinter in a greenhouse. I think I need one of these. And those of you who've been following me growing bromeliads in my own garden at home will imagine how excited I got to see these almost chandeliers of bromeliads hanging from the roof of the glass house. It was absolutely stunning and there were just so many species and cultivars around. Not many had individual labels, so although I'd love to have put labels up all the way through this video, I'm only going to do it for the ones that I'm 100% certain of because I don't want to put false labels out there and send you all on a googling wild goose chase. And on the topic of mislabeling plants, these enormous tropical water lilies were up until recently thought to all be Victoria Amazonica. And it was only when a world expert in the giant lilies noticed a difference in one of the lily pads growing in the pond. Working with gardens in Bolivia, where these plants grow naturally, they realized they actually had been growing Victoria Boliviana, the world's largest lily with individual leaves that can reach a record breaking 3.2 meters across. Whichever species they are, they're beautiful and they look fantastic alongside these tropical lotus flowers. Even the seed pods of lotus plants are stunning. The more you look to the tropics, the more, for me at least, I realize that I'm never gonna know or own all of the plants I can. It's just a never ending array of weird and wonderful plants in so many shapes and sizes and colors. But it's just fascinating to be able to see them, to get out and see these plants while they're around because a lot of the plants that are in cultivation at places like Kew are endangered in the wild. And it's the cultivation in botanical gardens like this that's helping to keep them going. And by paying to visit botanical gardens, you are contributing to the conservation of rare and endangered plants. So I urge you and recommend you to go for a day out in a botanical garden that's doing their bit for conservation and get inspired and fired up about growing plants all over again. I've got so excited looking around that my wife has actually had to take a rest. And while she's resting, I've decided I actually need a bigger greenhouse so that I can grow some of these weird and wonderful plants. I mean, man, I am in my element. Hopefully you've enjoyed walking around the conservatories and glass houses at Kew just as much as me and my wife did. If you've got any suggestions for other gardens that you'd like us to visit, please leave a comment below and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget, we've created a growers forum for people that love growing tropical and exotic plants and it's free to create an account. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.